Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of the LLM show hosted by me, Shaman Siri. Despite the chilly winter in Auckland, the field of LLM is heating up, so we don't require any heaters. In today's episode, I want to go through the first fully open source LLM model, Falcon. Having open source models is amazing and it can encourage all the researchers, all the companies, we can build many applications on top of these models. All this episode marks the beginning of a mini series where I want to discuss about how to incorporate these open source LLM models to your company's tech stack and build custom applications on top of that. When it comes to using these APIs, there are also some negative effects. Some of them could be like the privacy, some of them could be the latency and also the cost. Then again, if you think of this LLM revolution, the main thing is using language as an interface to kind of solve a lot of problems. So think of this technology as other tech stack, let's say DevOps or data engineering or mobile. So basically we need to kind of uh, create the infrastructure. We need to train our engineers to use this technology. But previously what happened was we never had uh, fully open source LLM models, but now we have Falcon. So it's the time that we should start to build our LLM tech stack in our companies. So these are actually from uh, Technology Innovation Institute Abu Dhabi. This is the web page of Technology Innovation Institute. They have all these news and details about their models. This, so latest news is all about these Falcon models. And also there are other news about their research centers and their infrastructure and everything and what they do. So yeah, go through it. If you want to know further about this uh, institute and, and then uh, let's go to hugging face model card to see what are the details of these models so there first of all there's a nice blog post from hugging face crew about these falcon models so they have mentioned different details regarding these models and how to train them how to run them in inference and uh, also how to evaluate and even how to fine tune. Today, I'm not going to talk about inference and fine tuning. This is more like introduction of these models and um, basically any research articles regarding to these models. So, so actually I wanna go through the fine tuning and inference of these models in a different episode. But in the meantime, you can always read about this blog post and um, get more details about this. Uh, so let's go to the model card. So basically there are two types of Falcon model. One Falcon model has 7 billion parameters and the other Falcon model has 40 billion parameters and they have trained these models with their own data set called refined web discussed within next few minutes. And yeah, it says like this made available under Apache 2.0 license. And so then there are a nice set of points that would encourage us to use Falcon 7 billion or Falcon 40 billion model. It outperforms comparable open source model. So this is the number one open source LLM model in the open LLM leaderboard. This is a leaderboard created by Hugging Face and the crew to kind of evaluate these open source LLM models. And then it features an architecture optimized for inference. This is a big thing, you know, when we are talking about open source LLM, we actually need to use them in our custom application. So inference is a real deal. So if we can have a quick inference, we can actually save a lot of server. It is made available under a permissive Apache 2.0 license allowing for commercial use. Next is about the checkpoint. They say this is a raw pre-trained model that has trained on the next word prediction. So this is not optimized as chat GPT. That means there's no instruction fine tuning or there's no reinforcement learning from human feedback. It just the pre-trained model. So keep in mind, this won't directly work as ChatGPT because it hasn't trained like that. But you can always train this for your custom applications. That's the whole point of having open source LLM check for. So similar to all other model cards in Hugging Face, this also has all the details about the model name, how to load the tokenizer, how to load the pipeline, and also how to generate sequences and everything. And then it says uh, this runs with PyTorch 2.0 and Transformers. And they, then they also explain about different risks, biases, and limitations. And the next section is about their training details. They have mentioned about their training dataset and also training procedure. So basically, training dataset 
is their own data set called refine web and so when it comes to training procedure you can see they have used 384 a 140 gigabyte gpus so that's a lot but yeah it is still good we have the checkpoint then it comes to the speed size and time they mentioned it took like two weeks to train the 7 billion model so yeah which is pretty cool then they have mentioned about their training architecture which is pretty much the gpt3 paper but they also have highlighted what are the differences of the architecture compared to the original gpt3 architecture these are positional embeddings attention and decoder blocks so basically you can read about these methods so then they have explained some of the hyperparameters related to their model number of layers 32 the and then the at then the dimensions of the attention head which is 64 and the vocabulary size is 65k and the sequence length is 2048 this says like how much tokens it can kind of handle as the input and then we go to hardware and they say like they have used aw sage maker again 384 a 140 gb gpus uh yeah this is pretty much it we have to wait until they publish the main paper related to the model training and the model architecture but they have already published the paper related to the data they already have the paper related to their data set so this is the model card for the falcon 40 billion model which is actually the big brother of falcon 7 billion model is like the best model right now in the open llm leaderboard it outperforms model like llama stable lm red pyjama and mpt small card i want to really see the amount of gpus they have used during the training and the training time the number of gpus they have used during the training it is 384 a 140 gig gpus which is similar to the falcon 7 billion model so next we jump into the training times here we go speed sizes and times basically it has taken two months so a few minutes ago i just highlighted falcon 7 billion model has only taken two weeks but with the same gpu settings this has taken two months it could be because they had to reduce the batch size to fit them into the gpus so finally let's check the size of the model checkpoint which is pretty much like 90 gig so if anyone want to further explore about the modeling code this is the source you need to go through it has everything or so with the details in this model card we all know they haven't published anything related to their model or model training procedure but they have published the they have published their data set collection procedure and everything actually we can quickly look at it to this day this is the only paper they have published related to the falcon models so this is not about model architecture or the model training but this is about their training data set the idea of the paper is pretty simple what they say is previous work like gpt3 have used large amount of a data set that consists of two parts first part comes from the web crawl data the other part comes from special documents more like properly curated data but paper the main point is we don't need to go go we don't need to go with that properly curated data set we can still use this web crawl data but we need to do a proper filtering and deduplication what we can you can once you do it you can you can obtain high quality data then you can train powerful models but in other words what they say is if you can create a high quality data set from a web common crawl it is easy to open source as well because you don't have any private data entities and they have a nice graph where the x-axis is the training time y-axis is the aggregated zero short performance so you can so you can see after 100 days of training this model's performance is pretty much similar to gpt3 api <laughs> so the main highlight of the graph is authors were able to train a 40 billion model and still get the performance similar to gpt3 api with just common web crawl data filtered but properly filtered and deduplicated so this again highlights the importance of their data set creation so i really enjoyed the introduction section because it has a nice summary about prior work that has spoken about the connection between the large language model performance with their model sizes and data set sizes the basic idea is in order to create high quality language models we actually need larger models as well as larger data sets 
top this highlight from prior work in order to train a gpt3 size model which is 175 billion parameters you would require no less than 3500 billion tokens and then they are saying this is actually 10 times larger than whatever the public data set we have the saying is if we go with mix of common web crawls and these private data sets it's really hard you know they are calling this high quality data it's really hard for researchers so it is it would it would create a huge barrier for researchers when it comes to improve these large language models the problem is when you have this high quality data they would come from different private entities and all and there will be all these legal challenges like licensing then what the authors have done is they have used the common web crawl and collected a huge data set filtered it without manual labor which is pretty cool they have used some normal techniques to filter this data so finally they were able to create a data set called refined web that consists of 600 billion tokens it's pretty good for researchers and all. a lot of details about how they have refined this web crawl data set and created this uh, filtered and deduplicated data set so i would highly encourage you to read about this paper to get an idea about what is the procedure behind creating this kind of a big data set to pre-train an llm for the task of next word prediction i know for most of us including me this is not a practical task we would never able to train our own language model from scratch but this is really good this paper actually summarizes everything and then um, they talk about this deduplication i really found this interesting what they say is prior have already proved when you're training large language models and your data set has duplicated sentences and sections and everything can create a huge negative impact on the model's performance because models will try to memorize rather than trying to find patterns then they have cited this paper which has mentioned when you're training a 1 billion parameter model a hundred duplicates are harmful at the scale of 175 billion that means gpt3 scale even a few duplicates could have a disproportionate effect actually you miss me sir uh, so it is important to note that during their data filtering and deduplication they haven't used any manual labor so they have highlighted different ways of filtering and different ways of deduplication and everything so in summary refined web data set is all about using commonly available common crawl data and create a filtered and deep duplicated data set which is good enough to train a large language model that can even outperform gpt3 that is pretty much it. in this episode we actually talk about these falcon models and also the data set that they have used during the training